Yes. Uh, good afternoon once again. Good afternoon, sir. Ah, okay. Uh, in this uh, session, we are discussing on internally displaced persons, a challenge to inclusive democracy and development in India. This is one of the not only in Indian subcontinent, but also in uh, various countries. This is, uh, as I believe, one of the big uh, challenging issues. There is no second thought in it. And you can put a fundamental question to anyone who are actually internally displaced persons and uh, internationally displaced persons. Here, first of all, we have to clear definition class, characteristics. How many laws are there with you to protect and promote or increase uh, human rights of these uh, vulnerable groups in other than internally displaced persons are concerned. How exactly they are distinguished with refugees? Refugees are different from internally displaced persons. You cannot mix with uh, refugees here. First of all, you have to have you know, definition clause in connection to the subject matter of uh, internally displaced persons. What is to be done? How exactly? Law is actually imperative with you to understand internally displaced persons. Why these people are actually displaced? What are the root causes for internally displaced persons. In fact, uh, they are not from uh, other countries, they are from our own country. Especially in India, we have had more than 7 lakh internally displaced persons. 7 lakh internally displaced persons. We can witness 2,80,000 Pandits, especially in Kashmir Valley, who were actually migrated from Kashmir Valley to Jammu as settled in Jammu. In fact, I have visited Jammu and Kashmir with a view to understand the problems of internally displaced persons based on my uh, UCC project as well. This is one of the observations I have. First of all, let us understand what are the reasons for internally displaced persons or the internal displacement or internal, internal displacement. There are so many reasons we have, be it uh, armed conflict, ethnic issues, religious issues, regional issues, communal issues. Look at the religion and you can put a fundamental question, what is religion as such? Religion is nothing but pathway to realize the God. When you just look into Article 25 of uh, the Constitution of India, wherein it has outspoken on uh, right to freedom of religion, you have gone through two measures here in this uh, complex issue. Right to freedom of religion. Rights are there, freedoms are also there when you are understanding the religion as such. Religion is nothing but pathway to realize the God. It's a faith, a belief. But in the name of religion, you are targeting the people. 
this is one of the major challenging issues we have when you are just sharing with the internal displacement as such see when you are sharing few thoughts on this of course there are certain challenging issues based on democracy and the development as well especially in democratic setup perhaps uh, you may have gone through very well look at internal displaced persons are those who have been forced obliged to leave their homes behind notably for reasons related to armed conflict other violence and who remain within border of their country the fact that they are not supposed to cross their international borders if they cross their international border obviously they are supposed to be called as if uh, refugees of uh, others other countries or nationals of other countries or statelessness there are so many definitions in connection to you know the migrants who are actually migrating or cross crossing the international uh, border as such first of all this uh, slide is actually dealing with a very good definition on uh, internally displaced persons who are all internally displaced persons those who have been actually forced or obliged to leave their homes behind notably for reasons related to armed conflict other violence and who remain within the borders of uh, the countries this is quite common when you are running with the internal armed conflict and international armed conflict you know very well better than me all international conflicts are quite common when you have failed in resolving the disputes peaceably or amicably then the question would arise on the basis of a coercive measures based on coercive measures you can resolve some disputes between states themselves that's why it is to be called as if a international <coughs> armed conflict known as international armed conflict or conflict between nations are concerned that's why the geneva conventions and additional protocols geneva convention 1949 and additional protocol 1977 they are actually speaking on uh, international armed conflict and internal armed conflict as well you know very well that internal armed conflicts are 100 times dangerous than international armed conflicts this could happen especially in kosovo very recently in uh, sri lanka and such the states are concerned they face lot of uh, issues based on uh, internal armed conflicts are concerned when you got internal armed conflicts obviously people will move from one place to another place to meet the needs of uh, their own so therefore human migration or the economic migration is quite common all over the world but you cannot stop it you cannot stop migration that is inherent in the society as such this is one thing on the other hand look at the classical controversies between biodiversity act 2002 and forest dollars act 2006 they are highly contrary and contradictory in nature though these legislations have been actually passed by the parliamentarian there are so many criticisms leveled against to these acts are concerned protection of biodiversity act 2002 and forest dollars act 2006 have a look on and understand a categorical distinctions between these two look at the people who have been actually displaced due to some forcible repatriation from uh, you know the government especially forest 
officers are concerned they are threatened the people who are living in hill station areas take for an example in karnataka soligas yerava kadukuruba bettadukuruba jenukuruba siddhi you just visit some places over there it is highly marginalized and it's very difficult to be answerable they cry literally they are not finding any way to lead their life so therefore it requires a lot of uh, efforts to be made with you to understand uh, internal displacement country like india as such in 2005 in fact we placed a bill before a parliamentarian but it was unsuccessful why parliamentary did not agree with these uh, proposals even today it is under consideration it's a dilemma it is left to the certain criticisms as well when it uh, comes to the knowledge of uh, northeast area especially in the mizoram manipur nagaland and all in all the people who are you know stayed back especially in uh, hill station areas and plain areas are actually threatened by forest officials here the question would arise who are these people where exactly they have come from have they come from america have they come from european countries have they come from other neighboring countries of course for a refugee there is a protection we have a unhcr united nation high commissioner for refugee which was actually established on the basis of refugee status convention 1951 how about uh, internally displaced uh, people even today in india we are not finding good support except article 21 of indian constitution no law is there to help them this is very pathetic country like india and we talk many things on democracy and such other uh, slogans look at these people if rather i would say as i have already been made clear that we have had more than 7 lakh internally displaced persons then no rehabilitation has been made so far till now this is highly pathetic issue something has to be looked upon and you we have to address at the higher level as such this one thing <clears throat> fortunately francis deng francis deng was actually appointed by secretary general of united nations organization in 1992 with a view to study the problems of uh, idp all over the world in 1998 he was actually able to you know frame certain guiding principles on protection of uh, internally displaced persons except these guiding principles no law is there all over the world look at the situation it is because of you know lack of interest in a country due to some religious issue communal and such other these people are highly retracted highly retracted this is one of the challenging issues we have i'll give you some uh, you know statistics especially in syria in syria we have 7 lakh sorry 7.6 million in syria alone we have 7.6 million colombia 6 million iraq 3.6 million democratic republic of congo 2.8 million sudan 2.2 million south sudan 1.9 million nigeria 1.2 million pakistan 1.4 million somalia 
million. Look at these statistics. Every day we are keep, you know, collecting some data in connection to IDP, but no rehabilitation has been made so far. Who are these people? They are all actually human beings like us. It is our concern to help them based on certain legislations or the rights which could be recognized, isn't it? I must share with you, no matter where there is a right, there is a duty. Where there is a duty, there is a liability. This is our dual relations, I agree with you. I fully agree with you. However, one could understand these problems, especially right to life, liberty, fraternity, right to religion. As we have already been uh, uh, understood based on uh, one of the projects funded by a uh, state government, I visited almost all the places in the state of Karnataka to study the problems of IDP. They are all actually pathetic. Look at their conditions, poverty line, education, rural backwardness, economic crisis, social issues, cultural issues. These are the issues we have. Now, we are here. Nagarika Samajeta Jyotika Avarana Vodagulu Speku Unta Yeltiv. Avarena Anagarikara. Avargo Nagarika Tehi De. Samskruti De. Samskar Goli Dave. Yuvatku Kuda. Bandipur Dalli. Yeno. Avarana Oklipsi Berekadi Ge Kalisi Dara La. Yuvatku Kuda Avara. Mane Devarana Pooja Madle Ka Avu Birta La. Yav Devarana Pooja Madle Ka Avu. At least rehabilitation and a Sari Madidra, Bernie, Nane, Karkondok Tinimiga, Yen Bandipur, and Alvatu or Sid in the Hindi, you know, forcible repatriation Madidra la Yella, you know, Kadalita Kanta, Vanavasi Gurigi. Our Gilu Urguno Kodano Argondo retail is Tana Mangalana Kodila. ये बसवनी के लिए हार्डी एड बोधो, हमेंले मास्टर गुडे हार्डी एड बोधो, इल्ली बियार इल्स चले के लोगों तो सुमर अरवत तीन दरवत तय तो हार्डी गुडे वड़ा गये थे बे, आवो अन्ना निवो ये लोग कोड़ा समाज तथा मुख्य वाणी के तरली कागले ला निवो, याव दो वन दो अनसाइंटिफिक रिपोर्ट्स कोड Parisaravana, Rakshana Madhva Kunta or Hedidru Wat Kotru. Adat Melian Madri, Kasuri Rangan reported Kondo, Nivo, Ali Vandri Tili, Yeno, Privatization Madi, Homestay Gulu Madi, Resorts Gulu no Madi, Ali Residence Gulu Madi, Aur Nala, Oclips Putri, Vara Kalisidri, Kelonjana Ali Kelsa Martha Dere Papa, Yeno, Dari Ladagi. So, I am going to go to the city. I am going to go to the Mysore University. The role of non-governmental organizations working in tribal areas. The symposium is going to go to the symposium. The symposium is going to go to the symposium. The symposium is going to go to the non-governmental organizations. Well, the Madir Bodo, Kelon organization school, Ilanta Hedala, Adur Kuda Sariagi, our Astana Managalana, Nord Polika, Agli Lanta, Vondo, Samasa Yiglukura Udi. Sir, please, yeah, sir, please say in English. Yeah, yeah, okay, no issue. I am from Kerala. Okay, okay, I can understand. Thank you, sorry, sir. Ah, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. See, as far as, you know, uh, recent uh, issues are concerned. It is highly uh, implicative, I agree with you. However, uh, we need to have some classical uh, uh, 
you know alternative mechanisms to overcome you know the internal displacement country like india as such this is one thing on the other hand when you are just uh, sharing with few thoughts on the basis of westernization and easternization as such your westernization has come through on the basis of uh, christianity whereas easternization is focused on the basis of uh, islamic faith therefore as and when you deal with these uh, classical issues beat on uh, refugee crisis or internal displacement first of all you have to clear down to earth on the basis of uh, easternization and westernization as well especially in europe and uh, us asia afro centric uh, issues it is highly gravitational gravitational because of uh, unscientific approaches or uh, unscientific uh, reports submitted by few vested interest of people these people who are living at the corner side of uh, the society can be migrated to other places forcefully or voluntarily there are two things shall also be looked into forcible repatriation and voluntary repatriation when you have gone through forcible repatriation obviously if rather i would say the forest dollars act 2006 is very much required as and when you deal with you know biodiversity act 2002 as both should be balanced astonishingly if rather i would say these acts were actually passed by the parliamentary they are not actually passed by federal go- government like you know america or uh, european countries are concerned these acts have been actually passed by the parliament they should have been known the problems of uh, forest uh, officials and the people who are living in these areas now aboriginal are natives of uh, the forests are concerned nothing has been done so far if uh, rather you would say and you know very well there is no universal legally binding instrument equivalent to 1951 refugee convention as such in nutshell i can say for a refugee there is a protection there is a law and in fact united nation high commissioner for refugee has been working day and night to rehabilitate refugees all over the world especially in india we have uh, tibetans chakmas rohingya nepalis then uh, sri lankan in tamil nadu tamilans in sri lanka vice versa all these issues we have at least for them law is there but it's not so in the case of uh, internal displacement as such <clears throat> on the other hand there are some specific uh, legislations at the international level none other than international covenants or treaties have been in fact dealing with uh, internal displacement as such look at fourth geneva convention 1949 protocol i mean one additional to the geneva conventions 1977 the protocol second additional to geneva conventions 1977 the rome statute of international criminal court 1998 then african union convention for the protection and and assistance of uh, the internal displacement person i mean to say the kampala convention 2009 is that so except these uh, specific uh, uh, international covenants we are not finding a good number of uh, you know uh, law actually uh, which would be helpful for these uh, people are concerned this is one thing i must share with you on the other hand if at all you want to retain these international covenants at the municipal law 
ratification is very much required without ratification no law can be implemented at the local level as such even today we are not finding very good a ratification process as it is uh, stated under uh, vienna convention on law of treaties 1969 as such vienna convention on law of treaties 1969 is very clear about uh, the ratification which could be done by the people who have already been signed the record that's why it is to be called as if uh, the pacta sunt servanda pacta sunt servanda it means pact must be respected pact must be respected it is one of the responsibilities on the part of a state should acknowledge if it is obligated obligated at the international level as such this is one thing on the other hand if the law is actually overriding the perimeter norms of general international law obviously just cogens would prevail over the subject that's that, this is to be called as if uh, the perimeter norms of uh, general international law as such you cannot make a law which is against to the public policy of a state and the word public policy as well so therefore whenever you want to go for making some such a kind of a international covenants or conventions or treaties or a protocols between states you have to be careful and you should know how to uh, implement such kind of a you know international covenants at the local level as such the, on the other hand though we have had a guiding principle for the protection of internal displaced a person or uh, 1998 nothing has been done in india as i said in 2005 we placed you know a bill before uh, the parliament but it was unsuccessful due to some reasons political issues there was no political will when we were actually passing this bill why this uh, bill has not been passed what was the reason why it has been actually politicized and we talk many things on democracy goals right to development we talk many things on uh, triple justice what is a triple justice triple justice is nothing but political justice economic justice social justice and you say the fruits of justice should be shared to the people who are left out in the society fruits of justice should be shared to the people who are left out in the society we have to respect others i respect your truth please respect my truth that is the strength you should understand it i am not living alone i am living with my wife i am living with my children i am living with fellow friends colleagues publics all in all <clears throat> this has to be looked upon while you are dealing with these issues so therefore i must share with you however you might be having some categorical you know criticisms leveled against to this based on some aspects <clears throat> of course a law is actually imperative to hear the voice of the people this is very very important that's why first of all you have to respect others i respect your truth please respect my truth that is the sources of uh, you know education as well you have to uh, understand on the basis of uh, these uh, parameters are concerned we have got you know customary law among the nations customary law is one based on tradition practice habits rituals and the, uh, since the time immemorial you have been actually following them antiquity all in all you should uh, understand in absence of uh, the conventional uh, law or uh, what shall i say treaty making law as such treaties are in fact uh, divided into two as you have already been known perhaps uh, you may have gone through you know intrasa relations while you were uh, teaching uh, to your students first of all you have to understand intrasa relations when you are just uh, reading writing on uh, displacement or uh, displace uh, persons are concerned we have got treaty making law or 
law making treaties or treaty contracts treaties are divided into two in nutshell law making treaties and treaty contracts look at vienna convention on law of treaties 1969 is a law making treaty then refugee status convention 1951 is a law making treaty based on law making treaty you can have some treaties among the nations with you to work on problems of uh, these vulnerable groups none other than displacement people why are you keeping all these issues for a long time even today they are not able to have some benefits from the government itself this is uh, somewhat a ridiculous uh, country like uh, uh, india as such i have got one of the hypothetical uh, answers here you please go through it displacement is a political and social problem strengthen its institutional capacity comprehensive national policy for idps in consultation with displacement person ngos and intergovernmental organizations are in fact required but nothing has been done if rather it is proper enforcement mechanisms shall also be looked into and you have to uphold the principles which were actually drafted by francis deng of sudan who was actually appointed by secretary general of united nations organization to study the problems of idp all over the world i mean internal displaced person all over the world of course no doubt unhcr is also conducting research but the, they want to find out how many refugees are there they want to you know escape from the clutches of a, a rehabilitation process for uh, idp they are not actually lending any money for uh, refugees they are lending these are the classical you know issues we have when it comes to the knowledge of uh, uh, unhcr as such united nation high commissioner for uh, uh, refugees uh, a concern so therefore uh, they have been actually neglected especially in the area of uh, disaster responses are concerned therefore uh, of course no doubt uh, this is my you know universal hypothesis it's not actually statistical you just go through the hypothesis how in what manner these problems are uh, actually highly retracted because of a political and social uh, or institutional uh, uh, issues are concerned there is a statement of problem you just go through it we have had you know insufficient legal regime governing such persons as i said except article 21 of indian constitution no law is there look at guiding principles take a very broad approach to internal displacement arm conflict and communal or ethnic violence are actually continued even today you just go through you know some what shall i say crisis among the uh, nations as well crisis are actually quite calm you just go through syria yemen civil war syrian civil war yemen civil war syrian civil war war in georgia chechnya classical issues between iran and iraq problems between south korea and north korea indo pak indo china it is because of a few reasons like you know refugee crisis between india and sri lanka we are not in good in terms with sri lanka as well you know very well your neighbor will not be a good friend your neighbor neighbor may be a good friend this is my observations i'm just sharing it your neighbor will not be a you know good friend your neighbor neighbor may be a good friend however you might be having some uh, classical uh, you know exceptions in this uh, record as such so therefore something has to be uh, looked upon with you to understand this i must say it you based on 
one of the statements given by uh, Leo Tolstoy. He says, one of the first conditions of uh, the happiness is that the link between man and nature, that shall not be broken. The relationship between human beings shall not be broken. It is highly natural. That you should understand as such. See, when the people are actually displacing from one place to another place, who is this responsibility? That the state should know it. State should give adequate facilities to these people when they are displacing due to disaster, ethnic issues, communal issues, religious issues. All these reasons are there for displacement as such. This is one thing. And as I've already been made clear in the <clears throat> first session, I referred some issues in connection to the people who are living in, uh, are closer to uh, BRLs, Bandipur, Nagaravale, then Joida, Ankola, Karwara, and all. Few, you know, tribals have been actually thrown out. Even today, they are not finding adequate facilities like food, clothes, shelter, whatever you may be finding, you know, minimum necessities, necessities for a human being. Yes. But all I want, I want to live as a human being, I need to have minimum necessities, food, clothes, shelter, as such. Now, nothing has been done. This is, this is one of the major aspects we have. And you just go and ask them. It is because of uh, their existence, you know, you know, forest is actually remained with very good condition. All right. So therefore, you have to understand it. Look at one of the statements given by uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt. He says, a nation that destroys <coughs> its soils, destroys itself. Forests are the lungs of our land. <coughs> Purifying the air and giving fresh uh, strength to our people is uh, very much required. So therefore, we have to protect our surrounding circumstances. Without understanding our surrounding circumstances, whatever <coughs> you do have some action plans would be undermined. Therefore, something has to be looked up. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> they are, in fact, entitled to full civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Any abridgment of their rights as actually citizen, which is based on solely on their IDP status, is therefore discriminatory, not only in India. You can visit African, European, American, or such other Asian countries are concerned. They are highly dis discriminated. So therefore, sometimes, you know, it may not be able to find out some solutions. Still, there is a way out. And in some countries, it is uh, very difficult to estimate the total number of uh, conflict and violence as well. Even in India also, we have had <clears throat> just uh, 7 lakh internally displaced persons. That uh, statistics may be more and more. Might be. Still, we need to have some documentations <clears throat> in connection to the subject matter of uh, IDP as such, internal displacement, the displaced persons are concerned. Sometimes uh, they don't reveal also the truth, where exactly they have come from. That's also one of the major uh, uh, issues we have. When I visited some places, especially in uh, BRLs, Bandipur, Nagaravale, and uh, such other places uh, in the state of uh, Karnataka, they say like anything. They did not give, you know, fact-finding report about uh, 
their uh, you know repatriation as such they are scaring it is because of uh, the forest officials these are the major issues we have when you are uh, um, understanding the idp i mean to say the internal displaced person who have been actually displaced from a uh, um, forest area to other areas are concerned inadequately addressed by the international uh, humanitarian response except uh, guiding principles which were drafted by vice i mean uh, uh, francis deng of sudan there is nothing in it there is nothing in it there are some general classes as well we need to have you know particular law which should be dealt with uh, you know crisis like idp as well on the other hand you can have some research questions in this regard which group can be considered as internally displaced person it's a fundamental question to be asked whenever you want to go for researching on idp as well is there any difference between refugees and internally displaced persons yes there is a difference between refugee and an internally an internally displaced person as well internally displaced person shall not you know cross his uh, actually national borders whereas refugees are supposed to be you know cross their national borders are concerned they are supposed to be called as if uh, the internationally displaced persons uh, as well then what are the reasons for displacement i have given some reasons it is because of ethnic issues religious issues and then uh, disaster issues famine flood and such such other issues it is because of natural calamities environmental issues people have been actually migrating from one place to another place as well and then who is responsible for the protection of displaced state is responsible in nutshell i can say whether displacement should be limited only to conflict situations no it can extend even beyond this like you know rioting and insurgency issues or a disturbance sudden provocations it is because of these reasons people may be you know displacing from one place to another place as well this this is one of the aspects which shall also be cleared then what are the remedies available to the displaced persons are concerned we have had so many remedies look at article 226 of uh, the constitution of india wherein it has all spoken on writ petitions you know very well better than me we have writ petitions fire writ writ petition certiorari covariant prohibition habeas corpus prohibition all this so through um, article 226 you can appear under article 32 you can move to supreme court of india therefore we have had some remedies available where there is a right there is a remedy look at article 32 of uh, the constitution of india wherein it has also outspoken article 32 that itself is the heart of the constitution right to remedy that itself is a fundamental right as you have already been known without which other rights cannot be enjoyable if you just remove article 32 everything will go out from the constitution of india as such so based on article um, 226 and 32 of uh, the constitution of india we can move to the court for uh, you know remedies it is permitted under the law of the land as well then which law is applicable to protect the internally displaced persons are they legally protected this question is actually remained unsuccessfully we don't find you know sound specific legislations which are addressing the issue of internal displaced persons are concerned whether respective national governments have made any concrete policies to address the problems of displaced especially in india nothing has been done as i said in 2005 the bill was actually placed before the parliament it was unsuccessful it was politicized due to some reasons 
except Article 21 and rest of them, we are not finding some specific legislations which are dealing with this uh, issue as such. What steps taken by national and regional government to ensure the rights of uh, the IDP? There also, look at in the uh, African continent, we have Kampala. There's a Kampala Convention, which is actually dealing with, uh, you know, IDP at the regional level as such. Along with the continuity of this, we have had some protections through uh, SARC initiatives, SARC initiatives, then uh, OECD models are there, then uh, you have uh, uh, OAU, Organization of uh, African Union, earlier it was unity, in 2002 it was uh, actually coined as uh, African Union as such, at the regional level we have. See, the protection of rights of these people have come through on the basis of a regional, local, and international level as such. So th these are the things that shall also be balanced when you are understanding the problems of uh, you know, IDP all over the world as such. Well. This is one thing. There are some issues involved here. Issues involved and causes within the guiding principles. This is what uh, we have actually addressed uh, through <coughs> guiding principles as well, like armed conflict, situations of uh, generalized violations, human rights violations, natural human made, you know, disasters are quite common. These are the things are actually well cited under guiding principles. What are the reasons for IDP as well? These are the things. And on the other hand, there are some roots to protect uh, IDP. We have, you know, international human rights law, you know very well, through UDHR, ICCPR, International Covenant on Economic, Social, Culture, right, 1966, Vienna Action Plan, Beijing Declaration you have. Apart from these, you have a humanitarian law. <clears throat> this is what uh, Geneva Conventions 1949 and Additional Protocol 1977, they have outspoken. Along with the continuity of these legislations, we have International Covenant on Protection of Cultural Property 1954. We have then, uh, of course, no doubt, uh, ICIC people. Cut power, cut power the meeting the International yeah, Committee right. of Red Cross. International yeah, Committee of Red Cross, they have been actually working together with you to understand the problems of these vulnerable groups, none other than IDP assets. Any problem during armed conflict, they are answerable. <clears throat> this is what ICRC people, International Committee of Red Cross, they have been working together on the basis of a humanitarian uh, uh, perceptions are concerned. Based on humanity, based on the rule of a proportionality, they are working together. You know very well, what is the rule of proportionality? When there is a, a military necessity, first of all, you have to understand humanity. Military necessity and humanity, they should be balanced. That's why it is to be called as if uh, the rule of uh, proportionality. As such. Apart from uh, these uh, specific uh, laws, we have a uh, protection under uh, intra international criminal law as such, international criminal law. We have established international criminal court based on Rome Statute of 1998. It is operating at the international level as such. Any uh, you know, threat to peace, act of aggression or breaches of peace or genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes, crimes against peace, under such circumstances, obviously you can bring it to the notice of a international criminal court as well. It is, a, it is actually permitted. Any gross violation of human rights or anything against to the war, I mean to say war crime, all war criminals can be interrogated before ICC. That's the International Criminal Court as such. Before 2002, we couldn't find very good uh, International Criminal Court to prosecute uh, uh, these uh, wrongdoers. We had just uh, trials like a November trial, Malala trial, Tokyo trial, German trial, 
So based on this, uh, in 1993 and 1994, we had just, you know, tribunals, uh, Intrasa Criminal Tribunal for uh, former Yugoslavia, then Intrasa Criminal Tribunal for uh, Rwanda. So these were actually culminated in the form of uh, Rome Statute 1998. Unfortunately, India is not one of the member countries of this uh, uh, Rome Statute at, as such. We have not signed uh, 1998 Rome Statute. Let's see in future what is to be done. Uh, it is under the um, uh, consideration. Let's see what's, what is to be done in future. As of now, uh, as far as uh, India's uh, position is concerned, we are actually uh, uh, kept uh, aside from uh, the Rome Statute uh, 1998 as such. This is one of the you know, criticisms leveled against to the criminal law as well. So let's see uh, in future what is to be done. And you cannot compel any state to sign uh, international uh, or coherence are concerned. It is left to you to decide it. And we are not at all compelling anybody or uh, forcing anybody to sign on the record. It depends on your uh, interest relations. Of course, no doubt, <coughs> India has got very good uh, interest relations with other nations. Look at uh, Article uh, 51 and 253 of uh, the Constitution of India. They have outspoken on uh, the constitutional validity of uh, public international as well. I agree with you. I feel fully agree with you. However, uh, it depends on political will of uh, the country as well. Uh, nobody can actually compel. It depends on your uh, voluntary interest. In future, uh, let's see how best uh, uh, India is, uh, 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 is actually uh, very much uh, interested to sign on the record. I mean, uh, Rome, Rome Statute 1990. Uh, eight uh, as well. So these are the uh, routes uh, we have to protect uh, uh, internally displaced uh, persons are concerned. See, human rights can never be suspended, you know, very well. Like uh, right to life, uh, uh, ge uh, the prohibition of genocide, freedom from torture, cruel, inhuman, degrading treatment, punishment, freedom from slavery, freedom of thought, conscience, religion, right to due process of law, prohibition for, of punishment for any act that was not a crime when the act was actually committed. These are the uh, perceptions are there uh, on the basis of uh, uh, human rights are concerned in which uh, you have already been known. Human rights are nothing but basic rights, natural, inalienable. They are there everywhere. Please look into the preamble of uh, UN Charter 1945, wherein it has outspoken on uh, promotion and uh, encouragement of human rights and fundamental freedoms without distinction with the race, sex, language, and the religion as well. But the fact that the concept of protection nowhere different under uh, UN Charter 1945. You just go through UN Charter entirely, which includes war also. War is nowhere different under UN Charter 1945 like uh, the protection of human uh, rights are concerned. It is one of the responsibilities on the part of a state to protect human rights of uh, these vulnerable groups, none other than uh, IDP as well. Look at uh, the guiding principles, uh, which are actually covering all uh, pages of uh, the displacement as well. Uh, the uh, pre-displacement phase, which actually providing protection from unlawful displacement, Forcibly, you cannot uh, uh, do all these things. Then uh, you have to protect and assist, uh, you know, uh, when they're actually displaced from one place to another place as such. And uh, this is one of the responsibilities in which uh, the state has uh, 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 supposed to be looked into. And we should have some uh, durable solutions, namely return local integration at the place of uh, the displacement as well when they have actually displaced and in such a situation, uh, they shall not be actually threatened by anybody. So you have to give adequate uh, you know, security to these uh, um, displaced uh, people uh, as well, because they are also human beings, you should understand. And uh, in a silver linings, you have to uh, 
uh, have some uh, settlement mechanisms uh, in an uh, other uh, part of a country or uh, the reintegration as well. You have to have some uh, rehabilitation process or a, a resettlement uh, process uh, as well. Obviously, when you are just uh, uh, understanding, uh, you want sure light acre? It is uh, it is highly vulnerable. If rather, I would say, you know, you have a family separation, loss of a documentation might be there, freedom of movement in and out of the campus, loss of property. All in all, you might be finding over there. It's highly sensitive and seminal. Uh, of course, no doubt, we need to have very good uh, legal chemistry or synergy over here with you to understand the problems of uh, these uh, people are concerned. Look at, you know, the family separation is quite common when they're actually displacing from one place to another place as well. Loss of documentation. Sometimes they will lose everything, like other card, voter ID. All in all, they may be losing. Then freedom of movement in and out of uh, the campus may be restricted. You know very well. Man is by born free, but everywhere is in chain. This is what uh, your, you know, Bruzo may have said uh, on the basis of uh, his own perceptions. This, uh, this uh, could also be addressed as long as uh, you are just dealing with uh, this. Then physical security issues are there, right to life, then torture, rape, basic necessities of life might not be there, economic, no, social, no. cultural no. issues might be there, property resettlement, compensation, civil and political issues. I didn't all in all, you might be finding when you are just sharing with these. Of course, no doubt, no, uh, our no. five, 5 million people, internal displaced person in India in 2000. 19, it's upcoming like anything. This is what Ella, UN has been actually given yeah, yeah. a fact finding report as such. The last at home, you know, report, it was actually published by UN. Children's, you know, UNICEF said that almost 33 million new displacement were actually recorded in 2019. Around 25 million were actually due to natural disaster and 8.5 million are actually consequences of conflict and the violence as well. So therefore, uh, you are witnessing as many as uh, internal displacement, uh, country like uh, 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 India, Philippines, Bangladesh, uh, China uh, as well. Especially internal displaced persons are highly concentrated in the Middle East, North Africa, West, Central Africa as well. And it is increasing every day and night. As I said, human migration is actually quite common. Voluntary repatriation is quite common. It is because of these reasons, uh, the people have been actually migrating. Economic migration is quite common. This is what, uh, you know, consultative committee, which has been constituted by, you know, UNHCR in 2000. 16 is uh, in fact a written event today. Uh, every year we are sitting at uh, Delhi uh, to uh, understand the economic migration as well. Of course, uh, when it comes to the knowledge of uh, economic migration, economic migration is uh, actually left out. When we were uh, drafting the 1951 convention on uh, the refugees, this was actually left out. We don't know uh, why, you know, the, the the process was actually left out when we were just drafting the refugee status convention in 1951 as well. So something has to be looked upon. Let's see what to do in future. IDP population is war spread, especially in Syria, Cambodia, Iraq, Democratic Republic of Congo, Sudan, South Sudan, Pakistan, Nigeria, Somalia, all in all you have. Of course, no doubt, we have had some constitutional checks and balances to understand these. There are some cases decided by the Supreme Court of India. Look at Olga Telly's case, then uh, Mullin's case, 
राम प्रसाद वर्सेस चेयरमैन बॉम्बे पोर्ट ट्रस्ट केस नर्मदा बचाओ आंदोलन केस दिस इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द इंटरेस्टिंग केस व्हिच इज एक्चुअली डीलिंग विद द रिहैबिलिटेशन ऑफ द पीपल हु आर लिविंग इन यू नो अब ओरिजिनल एरियाज आर कंसर्न ड्यू टू डैम कंस्ट्रक्शन और मेगा प्रोजेक्ट्स इशूड बाय द स्टेट और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट people may be displacing from one place to another place as glaring example i can give you the yettinavale project as i visited even yettinavale project where you know lot of people were actually uh, migrated to other uh, parts are concern but the fact that you know the no rehabilitation has been made uh, till now uh, government is under uh, you know uh, under consideration to help these uh, Uh, displaced people let's see what to do especially the people who have been uh, uh, you know affected by yettina hole project which is actually uh, ongoing uh, in karnataka state as such tomorrow it might be in uh, make a dot or somewhere else so these are the examples one should uh, understand when the uh, displacement is made obviously it is one of the responsibilities on the part of a state to rehabilitate them immediately this is one thing punarvasiti anna first kalpisbekagutte adillale maadlilla andre idella samasya iglu kuda udaharanege kelavondu ee basavanagiri haadi irbodu hcd kote adr jothege elli andre gundlu pete kelavondu place kulalli illu gulu kuda no rehabilitation process aagilla these are the issues we have look at the sardar sarovar project this is also one of the major projects um remind even today terrace dam project we get the catchment area command area development flora and fauna all in all area. so the upstream areas ecological issues cultural issues political issues social economic all in all you you would be finding when you are understanding the problems of uh, these uh, people are concerned this is uh, the graph i am just showing you just have a look on i leave all these uh, slides to you you can make us of these slides for uh, further research this is quite common especially in uh, jnk jamon cosme people have been actually migrating to other places to lead their life when you got some problem obviously it is inner and in the society as well assam and ethnic violence are actually quite common especially in northeast area mizoram meghalaya uh, then uh, other northeast places uh, this is actually quite uh, challenging one gujarat is common nexalites violence and uh, especially in uh, chatisgarh and all it's quite common due to phobia or fear people have been actually migrating to other uh, parts of uh, the country tomorrow they will be called as a uh, internal displaced persons a concern there are some institutions which are dealing with uh, the issue uh, we have a international committee of red cross then uh, international organization for uh, migration world health organization we have united nation high commissioner for uh, refugees these are the agencies at least they are working for you know helping these uh, the vulnerable groups none other than idp as well see so look at all this keeping displacement community safe this has happened especially in covid 19 everybody knows uh, due to uh, you know long standing issues like you know covid 19 people were actually migrated to other parts are concerned the family families internet displaced by isl conflict you know uh, of course when they are displaced adequate uh, you know security should be given to these people they should not be uh, put in trouble somewhere so therefore uh, as many as uh, international agencies especially human rights watch amnesty international and rest of them they have been actually keep working day and night with you to understand uh, these vulnerable groups uh, are concerned so means for protection 
you can uh, protect these people through humanitarian assistance. You have to engage uh, in more uh, proactive protection strategies. You have to provide protection in safe areas. Find out some sa safe areas. That's very, very important. The protection through evacuation, protection upon return, resettlement, reintegration, all these uh, aspects uh, should also be observed. Look at Thierry Ban, uh, Virodi, uh, Sangarsa Samiti versus state of uh, UP. They, in fact, uh, came out with some action plan to overcome the problems of uh, the uh, people. Look at the Weller Citizen Welfare uh, uh, Union versus Union of India and MC Mehta versus Union of India. These are the interesting cases which are uh, address the issues of uh, you know, uh, these people are concerned. And it was observed, Supreme Court of India observed that the balance between environmental protection and uh, developmental activities could only be maintained by strictly following the principle of uh, the sustainable development as such. Along with this, we have public trust doctrine, public trust doctrine, polluter pace principle, common but differentiated responsibility, optimal use of natural resources, common heritage of mankind, common concern of humanity. See, these are the principles which are actually exposed to, through the judicial pronouncements, especially in India. Look at the public trust doctrine, which was actually highly speculative on the basis of, uh, uh, you know, MC Maita versus Union of India and uh, the Kamal Nath case as well. This is what Supreme Court is also uh, thinking in terms of, uh, uh, you know, sustainable goals uh, as well. These are the things are uh, per substance of uh, the apex court of uh, the Supreme Court uh, through, uh, uh, you know, through, you know, the uh, appellate jurisdiction or original uh, uh, jurisdiction of uh, uh, the uh, court as well. See, Nobel winner Amartya Sen says, the issue of development cannot be separated from a conceptual framework of a the human right. You know very well. See, we are all actually uh, sitting here to understand the issue on the basis of a uh, international human rights law, international humanitarian law, and international criminal law as well. So depending on this, we are just uh, understanding uh, the issues of uh, uh, the uh, vulnerable groups as such. We have a Central Water Commission which has been dealing with this. Look at uh, 3,600 dams that qualify the big dams. 3,300 uh, of them being actually built after independence. See, wherever these dams are actually being constructed, obviously displacement is in fact uh, quite common. It is because of mega projects issued by the central government and the state government, people are going to be displaced. Look at 695 more are actually under the construction assets. There are some ongoing projects which are actually going on, uh, especially a uh, country like India, but uh, adequate uh, representation should be made available to rehabilitate uh, these uh, uh, you know, internally displaced the persons are concerned. So this is one thing I should, I must uh, uh, share with you. If you have got any questions or query or something else uh, in connection to internal displaced person, I'm happy to be answerable to your uh, queries or concerns. Uh, good evening, sir. Yeah. Uh, Sri uh, Government Degree College, uh, WD Mathar Temple. Ready, sir. Ready, sir. Ready, uh, you know. <clears throat> sir. Adre, Moin Marin the Bandanta, Rohingya, Sirbodu, Atua Bangladesh, the Bandanta, Muslim and Gribodu, our rehabilitation model level. Yaudrele. 
ಅಲ್ಲ ಅದು ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜಿ ರೋಹಿಂಗ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜಿ ಬರ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಯು ಎನ್ ಎಚ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಇದೆ ಯುನೈಟೆಡ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಹೈ ಕಮಿಷನರ್ ಫಾರ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜೀಸ್ ಇದೆ ಅದ್ರ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗಿ ಹಲೋ ಹಾ ಗೊತ್ತಾಯ್ತು ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಈ ರೋಹಿಂಗ್ಯ ಹೊರಗಿಂದ ಬಂದಿರ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ಸೊ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಇದೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಯು ಎನ್ ಎಚ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಯುನೈಟೆಡ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಹೈ ಕಮಿಷನರ್ ಫಾರ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜಿ ಇದೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ದೇವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಸಪರೇಟ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಟಿ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೋ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಕೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಲ್ಲಿ ರೋಹಿಂಗ್ ಮುಸ್ಲಿಮ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಬಾಂಗ್ಲಾದೇಶ್ ಮುಸ್ಲಿಮ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ತುಂಬಾ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಬಟ್ ನಾವು ಟಿಬೇಟಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಗೆ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ರಿಪ್ಯೂಟೇಶನ್ ಮಾಡಿದೀವಿ ಅದೇ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗಿತ್ತೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಈ ರಿಫ್ಯೂಸಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಕನ್ವೆನ್ಷನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಎರಡು ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಇದೆ ಒಂದು ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಒನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೊಟೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದೀವಿ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಟೂ ದಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಫೋರ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ರಿಪಾರ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಯಾಕೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅವರು ಪೀಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಆಗಿ ಲೈಫ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಏನ್ ತೊಂದರೆ ಏನಿಲ್ಲ ಅವರಿಂದ ನಮಗೆ ಏನಾದ್ರು ತೊಂದರೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಅಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಟು ರಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ವಾಲಂಟರಿ ರಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಪರ್ಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಲಾ ಇದೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟಸ್ ಕನ್ವೆನ್ಷನ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಆಗಿದೆ ಈಗ ನಮಗೆ ಟಿಬೇಟಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಚಾಕ್ಮಾಸ್ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಯಾರು ಬಾಂಗ್ಲಾದೇಶ್ ರೆಫ್ಯೂಜೀಸ್ ನೇಪಾಲೀಸ್ ರೋಹಿಂಗ್ಯ ಒಂದ್ ವೇಳೆ ಅವ್ರು ಏನಾದ್ರು ನಮ್ಮ ಈಗ 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 ಸಾವರೆಂಟಿ ಟೆರಿಟೋರಿ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರಿಟಿ ಪೊಲಿಟಿಕಲ್ ಇಂಡಿಪೆಂಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಏನಾದ್ರು ಥ್ರೆಟ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಸೊ ಅಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ಯುನೋ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪರ್ಟ್ ಒಪಿನಿಯನ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ರಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ರಿಯೇಟ್ ನೇಮ್ ವಾಲಂಟರಿ ಆರ್ ಫೋರ್ಸಿಬಲಿ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಕೊಡ್ಬೇಕು ಟೈಮ್ ಕೊಡ್ಬೇಕು ವಾಲಂಟರಿ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ಸರಿ ಅಂತ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಫೋರ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ರಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ವಿತ್ ಸೆಕ್ಯೂರಿಟಿನ ಕೊಟ್